Alright guys, so after Nelson at Tech Mechtronics did my tune on my BRM, we got to talking about my swaps and he was game for seeing what he could do to improve them, just do some more custom tuning on it and I gotta say, I can't believe all the stuff that everybody said about older turbos and too big of injectors or too small. I would say Nelson can make just about anything work. So I'm gonna do some ride along videos with you here, show you what this load looks like. So I don't have exact numbers here, but I've got a 500 pound trailer with roughly a thousand pounds of lumber there, and then another 800 pounds of axles. So you can kind of do the math. I don't know for sure. We're somewhere in the ballpark at 2,500 pounds. That's rough cut lumber, so it's wet. We might even be closer to 3,000. But either way, we're going to be well over 6,000 pounds total with the TDI. And it's about 85, 90 degrees out, so it's pretty warm. I want to give you guys a view of the gauges here quick before we get started. The important stuff, obviously, is going to be the EGTs. Um, this ultra gauge at 5,000 foot elevation, you can see I'm reading negative 3.3. So just to give you guys an idea, I pretty much have to make three pounds of boost before I have none. That's about how it is up here. So actually, you can see the elevation on my speedometer there, 4,600 and we'll go up to almost just a little over 5,000 on the way home. So that's what I'll be trying to show you guys. It might be windy, it's hot, so I got the windows down. I'll show you what we're reading everywhere. The intake air temps can get pretty warm, but I haven't decided what I wanna do there if we wanna do some water meth injection or even just wetting the intercooler while we're driving but let's see see what she's got here with this load looking at the boost here you're gonna want to add that to whatever the boost reading is so here we go stayed pretty good there um, I do have a 180 degree thermostat in here so it runs a little cooler than you normally would but it gives me some room to climb up on the hills uh, also didn't really go over the specifics of this tune yet so I kind of explained that that I mean there's times I need almost 20 pounds of boost just to hold speed when there's headwinds and such and that just gets my my EGTs up there over 1400 pretty quick and so what Nelson was able to do is actually control my fueling when during my mid-range um, throttle pedal positioning to give me a very clean burning tune that just hardly smokes and 
it added more boost to lower the EGTs. But when you do that, it makes the engine temp rise faster. So to combat that, there's certain checkpoints that it that the tune looks for. Once I hit 205 degrees, it starts backing off fueling and timing to be able to reduce the temperature and it hits it again at 215 and so far I have not gone much over 220 to be able to climb any of my hills so I'll try to show you guys this on the interstate here we'll be on that on-ramp there one of the other awesome things about this tune is once I go over about 90% throttle I get full fuel again and I can make the EGT skyrocket if I want to but you see right now we're going about 82 85 there we're going flat land And I guess it's slightly downhill because we're under a thousand degrees now at 81 mile an hour here. But we're coming up on some gnarly hills. I'll try and just get different sections of it here. But we're going to drop down and then have to climb back out again. Alright, so the bottom of this hill we're at 4,580 let it get up to speed here. I'm going to coast back down to about 75 here. But you can see my EGT gauge is just ever so slowly creeping up. I'm at 1100 there. The cooling temp is what climbs up faster. Obviously my intake air temps are pretty warm. But it is still 83 degrees out here, so. And I just crested that hill. So we climbed up a little over 100 feet. And I didn't even go over 1,200 degrees. But my coolant temp there did go up to 201. And here's our next hill here. We're starting at 4,575 feet again. And I'm still holding 201, just dropping a little there. This is a little bigger hill here. And so you can see I'm losing speed with about 18 pounds of boost there. And still have not broke 1200 degrees. Just cresting over this hill. The last stretch of this is the roughest part. We're still at 4,700 feet. Didn't really get to cool down. And I've got a long stretch here. I believe we'll break 5,000 foot. So we've already hit the first point where the fueling gets reduced not having any trouble holding speed here, just watching the coolant temp, but as you can see I've downshifted to fourth, I'm up over 3,000 RPM, and I'm maintaining a thousand degrees. Got a little bit of a break here, and then a big climb. Alright, we're almost to crest the hill here about to hit 220 degrees 
I'm up to 1100 degree EGTs and we are almost to 5,000 feet. And we're up. I've been letting off a little slow, slowly here to just ease up on it, but I'm still almost at 70. And now we're on flat again. And that is about the worst stretch I could put it through here. And we should start seeing the coolant temp drop back down again. In case you don't believe me here. back there and we're dropping temp. Can't beat it. Well we made it home. I was thinking I didn't really go over the specs of the engine so just to go over that it's the ALH out of a 2003. It's got the 11 millimeter automatic injection pump. It's fed just with the standard filter. And then the Toyota pump is then, has this H fitting here, you can kind of see, sending the excess pressure back to the tank. Um, let's see, it's running an old GT 2056 turbo. It's got the, the billet wheel on it, but it is the older shaft drive turbo so it does spool up pretty slow and it's got 240 injectors in it and three core radiator and there's so many things I could improve on here you can see I've just got a one of those cheap eBay radiator fans so I could get so much more cooling that way the intake could definitely be worked on so the the cooling factors and everything combined you could do a lot more and spend a lot of money trying to get these things to run cooler but it's amazing what just a tune will do so I would highly recommend getting a hold of Nelson with Techmectronics tuning if you want to get yourself a tune that's set up for these swaps